we start with our air. We send three times home and then
whether one is a student or whether one is a teacher. I think even Swamiji's have tension, I think. Tension has gone, has become so, so, so pervasive. And one really wonders, is there a solution? The title is not just tension, tension, tension. Underneath, if you see, there is a word called solution question mark. Did you see? <coughs> you see, whether we are able to discover the solution in this probably 45 minutes to one hour, because I cannot discover solution for you. I can share my thoughts. But solution you will have to find. Then Swamiji, now itself I will get up and go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please give full attention to what we are discussing. Do not consider that I am talking something. I am not going to just talk something. I am going to share with you some very, very important conclusions which have been discussed in the Shastras and which are presented to a person who went through the highest form of tension. What I mean is that in the battlefield, Arjuna who went with a, with a sense of purpose to the battle, that there is injustice, this injustice has to be corrected, and to correct this injustice, I am going to, I am going to work hard. And when all ways by which it can be resolved failed, and was, and there was no other scope, then he had to, go, they had to go for the war. And there, in the midst of two armies, when Arjuna is facing. Arjuna wants to see with whom he is going to fight so that, so that he can plan out. Not that he has not planned out, he has planned out. But now in the midst of the situation, now a person who goes with, with great cheer, now goes there, looks at the army and starts wondering whether he will be able to manage this war. He starts thinking, should I fight my this war? Now in such a scenario, Arjuna loses his balance, overpowered by emotions, completely lost. And then says to Bhagavan Krishna, I don't know what is the right thing to do, should I fight or not fight? He comes under a dilemma, he becomes anxious, he feels that these are my relatives, these are my friends. Now attachment, I, my, everything overpowers him and he doesn't know what is the right way and then he falls after he sits on his chariot saying that I cannot fight this war and when he is in the midst of such an emotional turmoil, you have the entire wisdom of Bhagavad Gita given. I think the Arjuna here is not just the Arjuna there, the Arjuna is all of us who are present here because we are also in the battle of life and many, many, many a time when we feel that we can't do this, we will not be able to be successful, we cannot achieve what we want to achieve, is this the right way or is there some other better way? And so many conclusions when they come and we don't find solutions. I think in our life also, there are umpteen situations where we face, where we do not know what is the right way, what is the way forward. In such a scenario, you have the Bhagavad Gita delivered. And in this Bhagavad Gita lies that priceless wisdom which can bring about, which can give answers to 
every facet of our life challenges. At the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, Nashto Mohaha, all my confusions are gone, all my delusions are dispelled, I am ready for action. That is the power of knowledge which Bhagavan Shri Krishna has given to Arjuna. And that is a power of knowledge which has stood with many great leaders of our nation as they walk their life. And that is a power of knowledge for which people around the world come to the spiritual India to gain the wisdom. And it behoves of us to see what are the insights which Bhagavan Shri Krishna gives to Arjuna and through Arjuna to all of us. It is very beautifully said by one of the great commentators of the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Adi Shankaracharya, who says, Arjuna Nimitti Kritya. Arjuna was only an excuse. Bhagavan Sri Krishna wanted to talk to all of us for all times. And thus, the message of the Gita is relevant even today. So, what I am going to present to you today are the thoughts which are time tested, which have been validated, which has been again and again practiced and people have found an enormous value and potential. So please as I share these thoughts, listen with an open mind and see how it can be applied. Because understanding is not sufficient. Our Gurudev Swami Chinmayan used to say, Understand and stand under. <laughs> understand and stand under. It is not important how many times we go through the Bhagavad Gita. It is very important whether the Bhagavad Gita goes through us. In the Mahabharata, after completing the entire Bhagavad Gita, that portion, Veda Vyasa, the author of the Mahabharata, he writes there, Gita Sugita Kartavya. Gita Sugita Kartavya. Which means what? That Bhagavad Gita, what you have studied, ensure that it, it doesn't remain a Gita, it remains Sugita. Gita means song. What is Sugita? Sugita is not singing it beautifully. Sugita is making our life a song. Alright, with this brief introduction, let us go into the topic. Now, when we, we, we all also must have gone through this phase in our life as small children. Or we might have seen, we might even, we see other children going through this problem, being afraid of dark. being afraid of dark. Now, how do you help a child to go through, overcome that fear? Whatever you can say and tell, you know, there is nothing in the dark, there is no, everything is fine, there is no ghost, there is no Buddha, all these things are... How is a child going to be helped? The only way a child can be helped to overcome that fear of the dark, is to go in the dark. Initially, probably you will hold the child's hand and take to the dark. The next room is no, nowhere, anywhere outside. The next room is dark, the child is afraid to go there. You put on the light and you show the child. Look, there's nothing. Why are you afraid? There's nothing. The child continues to have that fear, the lurking fear. So you help the child, now maybe, now you go, you go, you go, no, 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 I won't go, I won't go. So I am here, I am here, you go, you go, you go. Once or, once or twice the child goes to the dark, understands. There is nothing to be afraid of. Still the fear is there. But then as one grows, one is no more afraid of the dark. Now, the best way to overcome tension 
is to go through the situation of tension and understand that it is manageable. He was saying that when we have tension, we listen to some songs and we get more tension, then we call somebody to sing and we all listen and then now these whatever ways we are adopting, they are only quietening the mind. Why are we tensed? Let us ask this question. Why are we tensed? We are tensed because we want a certain result, we want a certain accomplishment and we doubt whether we will be able to get it, we will be able to gain it. Tension comes because of our insistence of a certain result. Why does tension come? Because I want a certain result. And when I want a certain result, I mentally force myself. I try to put all my attention to gain what I want. But even though I put all my attention to gain what I want, I am not acting in the present, I am preoccupied with the future. Preoccupation with the future is the surest recipe for failure. Preoccupation with a result which is to be gained in the future is a sure method not only for failure, but the perfect condition for tension to rise. Because when I am preoccupied with the future, what, what, is the, what is the mind? See, a student says, I am tensed, I am tensed, I am tensed. Why is a student saying, I am tensed, I am tensed, I am tensed? Because a certain result the student wants. And the student is afraid whether he or she will be able to give the result. The teacher says, I am tensed, I am tensed, I am tensed. Why is the teacher saying, I am tensed, I am tensed, tensed? Because the teacher is afraid whether she will be able to go through her subjects or syllabus, whatever it is there, within the period of time, the teacher is tensed. A manager is tensed. Why is the manager tensed? The manager is tensed because will all these people Accomplish the task I have been set for to accomplish. The manager is tensed. And the one who is working for the manager, that person is also tensed. Why? Because I have been asked to accomplish it. Will I be able to do it? Every time we are tensed, that tension is because we are thinking about the future. Alright. So do you want to say that I should not think about the future? Is it feasible? Is it logical? Is it practical? A goal is always in the future. Should I not think about the goal? One will think about the goal. One has to think about the goal. If one has to achieve a certain result, which is a goal, then one has to plan out. And to plan out, one has to keep the goal in mind. But once you determine what is the goal, it is not important. Either. You have determined what is the goal and you have planned out what is the what is the way to move forward. But then as you work and move forward, if we can have a mind which frees itself from the result of the future and which can focus in the present and enjoy the present moment of action. Enjoy the present moment of action. Now look, the person has planned the goal. The goal is to be achieved. Yes, this is the goal to be achieved. Now keeping the goal in mind, you also planned a way of action. That is called the plan. So you, you know the goal, then you have planned out your work. And 
you have planned out your work, but to work out your plan, the mind has to be free. A mind which is overly preoccupied in the future, which is caught up with the result, and all the while anxious whether the result can be gained, is not making its full powers and energies and abilities available for the present. Because there is preoccupation in the future. There is anxiety about the result. And when the person is anxious about the result and preoccupied with the result, will the person have the sufficient ability, space of thinking, ease of working, mental, mental space, to bring out his best energies for the accomplishment in the present. <coughs> a mind anxious in the future is not available in the present. And such a mind cannot bring out its best abilities and best talents to full use. For every challenge that comes in our life, we all have the inherent capacity to face it to gain the best out of it, to tackle it. And even if we are not able to be successful at a point of time, but at least the learning from that to make us successful, to face the challenge and conquer it, if not today, tomorrow, we definitely have. <coughs> but if we are lost in the future, we will not be able to make the best of it in the present. And a bad present is a recipe for a horrible future. Just because we have planned the goal, just because we know what is the goal, and just because we have planned the right action to reach the goal, does not mean success in achieving the goal, because the mind has to become free in the present, and focus in the present, enjoy the present, work hard in the present and give the best in the present for that goal to be achieved. But the very fact that we are preoccupied with the future goal prevents us from giving the best in the present. And when we are not able to give the best in the present, the future goal is out of question. We are creating a recipe for failure by our own tension. Our own tension prevents us to bring our own abilities. The abilities we have built up all our life. Now is a time to bring those full abilities to the fore so that the accomplishment can be gained. But what are we doing? Our mind is still lost in that goal. Always thinking about the goal. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And therefore what happens to the present? The present, we are not able to focus. We have lost our abilities in the present in our preoccupation with the goal of the future. You can see many, many examples. Let me just give an example of, of a person who is who has studied very well. Your sons and your daughters, your grandsons and your Granddaughter, someone another day. Sometimes they study very, very well. They've got all the knowledge, they've got all the capacity, everything they have. But continuously thinking, will I, will I get good marks? Will I get good marks? Will I get good marks? Now the person goes and sits in the examination paper, does not even read the paper properly. It's very clearly written, answer 5 out of 7. But we are not reading at all. Why? The mind is, I should get good marks, I should get good marks, my mother and my father, what they have, what they will take. I should get good marks, I should get good marks. If I don't get good marks, all kinds of anxiety, when now your mind should be free. Now you should see what is written there, what you see the question paper. But you answer all the questions. And by the time you, you finish it, the time is over. 
But what about the other questions which are coming? We are not even going through it. Why? Person goes for interview. What's your name? 45. What? What's your name? I didn't ask your age. What's your name? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Where are you coming from? MA in history. What are you talking? Mind is preoccupied. A person has all the knowledge, highly accomplished, but the mind is preoccupied. A preoccupied mind can never excel. A preoccupied mind is a tensed mind. A preoccupied mind is a mind which does not have the freedom to enjoy. Let me give you a verse from Gita chapter 3 which deals on this topic. Mai Sarvani Karmani Samyasya. This is the Gita chapter 3 verse 30. Mai Sarvani Samyasya. Adhyatma Chetasa Nirashi Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasva Vigatachwa Now this is Bhagavan Shri Krishna telling Arjuna how to go about Mai in me Sarvani Mai Sarvani Sangyasya Mai Sarvani Karmani Sangyasya Right? In me in me, you give up all the actions. What do you mean in me, you give up all the actions? Understand that the capacity you have to do, the energy and the ability that you have, the very life that you have, is a gift from me. Knowing that all your actions are empowered by that life principle, which is me. Understand that I am present always in and through all your actions as a very life-giving energy. Adhyatma Chetasa and with your mind, Chetas is mind, with your Chetas mind, Adhyatma, Adhyatma means what? With a higher vision. Then how? Nirashi Nirmamaha Bhutva Nirashi. Asha means hope. Hope means what? I should gain, I should gain, I will gain, I may gain, I may not gain. All these thinking in the future you draw. Nirmamaha, Nirmamaha. Without that I, my, I, my overall, you know, always lost in your own thinking about yourself and yourself, I and my, you become free, free yourself from all these notions. Focus on the present, you just work. Fight. Fight is for Arjuna, he was a soldier. But to all of us, fight the various challenges of our life. Vigatajwaraha. Vigatajwaraha means what? Free of any feverishness. Free of any anxiety. Just, just try. Just keep working. And how is Bhagavan Shri Krishna telling? Fine, work at it. But let your mind be free of the futuristic thinking. Asha, hope is always in the future. Now, and also free yourself from your past. I and my. Oh, this is what I did before. Maybe, you know, all, all whatever I have done did not work out. Now, I did not work out. Probably the same thing is going to happen now also. It's not going to work out. Free yourself from the past. Free yourself from the future. Focus on the present and bring the best out. If this can be done, tension can be removed to a very, very great extent. I am not telling 100%. Tension can be removed to a great extent. But how tension can be removed to a great extent? Being in the present. Not, yes, you have the goal in mind. You have planned out your work. Now start enjoying the work. 
a child of God. Lose yourself. Happily what be at the work. And then let the result come. When you have given your best, the result will have to be the best. Result will have to be the best. But you have to give the best. And to give the best, you have to free your mind to give the best. So this way, look at work with a certain freedom and with a certain joy. Do not postpone the happiness only when we get the result. Do not postpone your happiness only when you get the result. Now enjoy. Now relish. Moment to moment, be in happiness. Moment to moment, when you are working, itself enjoy. Not that I am going to become happy when the result comes the way I want. Now you will enjoy. The result will come, then also you will enjoy. So this is the first point. So what is the first point in essence? Focus on the present. Free your mind of the future. Gurudev Swami Chanmayanji would say, free your mind from the anxieties of the future, the regrets of the past, and live in the present moment. This is called Karma Yoga. This is what is called Karma Yoga. Okay? Now, there is some other points also which, which we can look into with respect to this tension. Okay? Let us say the result. Now, now, now we have moving, we are moving from the action aspect of tension, and now we are going to the result aspect of the tension. Okay? 